Hello, Raw Mithril here once again, getting back to Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. It's time to check out Breeze Harbor. So let's go for it. Nice clear night sky. With multiple planets. And birds. Meet the Breeze Builders. have trollish little problems what live in buckets. And that's just rude. So, let's get started. Please excuse our mess, Spyro. We are currently suffering from a land blubber infestation. First they put out the fires on our boilers, and now they've shut down our ship, too. If you could stoke up the fires under the boilers, I'm sure you could make your way to the ship. The steam from the boilers will activate our highly advanced machines. And so, we have our task. If you talk to him again, he just repeats himself. So, going into the guidebook, we have one talisman, 400 gems, 16 enemies, and two orbs. Also, no skill point for this stage. Alright, so the land blubbers live in metal buckets. We know what that means. Flame won't work. So, charge them down. Also, a couple of things to point out over here. First off, notice the banded chest up there. We'll have to figure that out later on. Also, I'm leaving this land blubber alive for the moment. If you try and light one of the fires in this stage without taking out all the land blubbers, they'll immediately put it back out. So in order to make progress, you do have to defeat the enemies. But with that done, we can light the fire, get some steam going, and that gives us a whirlwind, so up we go. So coming over here, we have this metal spike mine flying in the air. Since it's metal, flame does nothing. And for fodder animals, we have walking clams. Okay, why not? The larger land blubbers here are armed with fire hoses. Over here, we have some very shallow water. However, if we light this fire, that raises the water level so we can get over there. But we have a little cleanup to do here first. Note that up there, there's another of those mines. And now, we have a cannon. You can aim this wherever you want and fire as much as you want to. Once you get the aim just right, this will take out the mines for us. It'll also do a number on banded chests. Also, if you get the aim just right over this platform, you can take out the mine that we saw earlier. It can be a little tricky to get that aim just right, though. So you might have to try it a couple of times. But with that, into the water with us. For those wondering, there's nothing over here but fiery death. I'm not too eager to experience that myself. And over here, we have these little flying ships. Yeah, that's not even water, they're just floating in a pit. Breeze Builder technology is kind of interesting. So, let's go this way. Those land blubbers have littered these metal spike mines all over the harbor. If you can clear them out, I'll give you this orb I found in a clam yesterday. Well, at least now we know what's going on with the mines. Shoot down the floating mines. Mm. 
And so we have another cannon to play with. A little attention to detail here with the mines that I like. Once they come out of the lava, they're glowing red as though they were exposed to the heat. Kind of a nice touch, that. Hitting the mines can still be a little bit finicky. Also, we have the banded chest there that we saw earlier. So, that's all the way back at the start of the stage. And, well, we don't have anything else that's going to take us there. So, we may as well backtrack now. Nothing else is going to take us this far back in the stage, so better to go ahead and take care of it while it's fresh in our minds. Right over this way. So, back we go. Oh, blue butterfly. Nice. With that, we can light this fire, and that'll get these boats going. Just be careful getting on board. So, coming over here, we have another cannon. If you get a good enough stream of cannonballs going, just kind of carpet bomb the area, you're, you're bound to hit them sooner or later. Like I said, aim can still be a little bit finicky, though. Like, I really feel like I should be hitting these things. Unfortunately, I can't lower my aim any. Sometimes it's just really hard to tell where you're hitting. Like, that feels like I'm aiming too high. But there we go. Thanks, Spyro. Here's that orb I promised. Sorry if it still has clam juice on it. Well, that's charming. But we have the first orb for the stage. It did take us back a little bit, but not too far. We just have to take a little boat ride again. So, over here, we have another 1-Up Butterfly. Extra lives and gems all over the place. What more could a young dragon want? So, over here, we have a power-up gate, but it's not ready quite yet. Just go ahead and get all the goodies here. And another 1-Up Butterfly. And another machine to power up. This one gives us a catapult. Up we go. Get back here. So that we have two fires to light here. One on this side, and one on the other side too. 
And with that, the ship is powered up. Thanks for getting our ship fired up, Spyro. Now we can proceed with our counterattack on Zephyr. Please take this talisman as a token of our gratitude. Very nice of you. So that's the end of the stage, but as usual, we're not quite done just yet. Now that we've defeated all the enemies, the gate's powered up. So, we have a spring. How lucky for me that you came along. My machinery is broken, and the gears I need to repair it are scattered all over the tracks. Could you hop on that trolley up there and get them? So, collect 50 gears with the trolley. There is, however, one small problem. It's not a major thing, but still a little bit aggravating. If you talk to him again, he'll just say the same thing. He didn't tell us how to drive this thing. He doesn't tell you until you fail once, so let's purposefully do that. Trouble with the trolley, eh? Well, just use the D-pad or analog stick to change lanes. Press the X button to jump, and press the circle button to fire the cannon. Why didn't you tell us that earlier? Now at least we know what to do with this thing. So, let's go. That being said, this isn't too terribly bad. Just concentrate on one path at a time. If they drop a box in the way, you have to jump over it. And if you want to change paths, just shoot the switch. There's a lot of gears to find, but overall this is kind of a fun challenge. I like this one. The TNT barrels, you have to shoot those. And I think I just jumped over a gear. I kind of panicked there. No, I actually did collect it. That was great work, Spyro. Now I can start fixing my machines. Here, I don't have room in my toolbox for this thing anymore. And so we get the second orb. But yeah, really, that wasn't too terribly bad. Sometimes, if they put junk on the track in front of you, it helps to both jump and shoot at the same time, just to cover all bases. And we also get the gems from the banded chest that we shot. And Breeze Harbor complete! So yeah, with that... We got... The Glass Anchor. Not sure how useful that's going to be, but we also got two orbs and 400 gems. So, let's get out of here. Up we go. This is probably my favorite of the end scenes, it's just so silly. Uh-uh, that guy. No, him over there. Nuh-uh, him. I love that one, it's great.
So Breeze Harbor overall is a pretty self-contained little stage. Not too hard, not too big. The trolley segment, it can be a bit of a thing if you don't know what you're doing, but overall it's not that bad. So it was a little bit short, but there's going to be a better chance later on to do the other speedway. So for now, that's where we're going to call it, and next time we'll check out Zephyr, where apparently the Breeze Builders are launching a counterattack. So with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.